Okay, so where we stopped yesterday, um, we were looking at the uh, solution for uh, heat transfer, the similarity solution, and uh, this is also called the Polhausen similarity solution. Okay, after, named after Polhausen, who continued the uh, velocity boundary layer similarity solution of Blasius, and he extended that to uh, thermal boundary layers, and <coughs> we saw the derivation of this particular expression subject to these boundary conditions and uh, of course you know from the from the intuition that for pantel number equal to 1 the if, the, if you replace the temperature uh, variable non dimensional temperature theta with the non dimensional velocity the momentum and the temperature equations are identical exactly so uh, polhausen got the idea that uh, if for pantel number equal to 1 they have the same solution so for other pantel numbers there should be some kind of a similarity solution possible so then he intuitively uh, substituted the same similarity variable which was used for <coughs> velocity boundary layer and finally he finds that uh, this falls into the category of similarity solutions okay and uh, of course we have seen uh, by direct uh, integration you can reach to this particular step where this gives you the solution of course you need the uh, f from the uh, <coughs> solution to the velocity similarity similarity and from there you plug it in and you can numerically integrate it or we have also seen the the standard way of doing all the solving all the ODEs will be hereafter by using the shooting technique so you solve the ODE directly numerically so that also will give you the same uh, solution for theta but for all this the solution for f is required okay so you have to solve both of them simultaneously solve the momentum uh, similarity solution once you get the value of f you substitute into the energy similarity solution find the solution for theta so all this also depends upon the prandtl number therefore your theta is a function of your location as well as your prandtl number so for a given prandtl number you substitute and you integrate it out and you find a solution so for different values of prandtl number you will get different values of theta as a function of eta so therefore if you plot the uh, similarity uh, solution coming out of uh, this if I plot 1 minus theta that is I just convert it as t minus t infinity by t wall minus t infinity as a function of eta you see for each prandtl number the slope of the curve changes higher the prandtl number greater is the slope so that which means uh, now now you all know that the slope of a temperature profile at the wall directly governs your near wall heat transfer rate okay so we are now going to calculate the heat flux which is carried away from the wall and uh, we all know that the heat flux is directly related to the uh, the slope of the temperature profile at the wall so greater the slope greater will be the heat flux carried away and therefore your heat transfer coefficient which is defined from this also will become higher so higher the prandtl number the higher the heat transfer coefficient okay so now you can probably once you know the uh, solution you can convert this in terms of uh, theta and uh, derivative with respect to eta and then plug in those values okay can you uh, you, have, you know we have defined theta in this manner t minus t wall by t infinity so this can be written as minus k so dt by dy will be d theta so t infinity minus t wall into d theta by d eta I am transforming the variables here into d eta by dy at uh, y equal to 0 or in fact I should apply this condition to d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 okay now uh, I also know my similarity variable eta is y times square root of u infinity by mu x okay so I can just uh, substitute this should give minus k t infinity minus t wall into what is d eta by dy square root of u infinity by mu x into d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 
Now, d theta by d eta theta equal to 0. So, this is my d theta by d eta. If you integrate this once, you end up with this solution for the slope d theta by d eta. Okay. So, you want to evaluate this at eta equal to 0. So, we will say that my d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 should be the value of this f double prime okay at eta equal to 0 okay so f double prime to the power pr at eta equal to 0 by 0 to infinity f double prime at eta equal to 0 to the power pr d eta right since your f is a function of eta so the value of slope from that equation will will be evaluated exactly at f double prime eta equal to 0 okay so i mean when you are doing this numerically so all you have to do is you have to substitute the value of f uh, double prime from the blasius solution that you got right so you know the value of f double prime at eta equal to 0 so that is nothing but the curvature okay you substitute and then you integrate it okay so then that should give you the the value of uh, the uh, temperature profile temperature slope a uh, slope of the temperature at eta equal to 0 okay so when you do this numerically once you have the complete blasius solution it is just a matter of substituting the uh, curvature for in terms of f and then calculating the slope in terms of theta okay so once you do this you will find out in fact this was done numerically by polhausen and uh, he has actually fitted nice curve so he he gets different sets of values of d theta by d eta for different values of prandtl number so depending on the prandtl number you get different values of this okay so now he fitted a nice curve for different ranges of prandtl number for each range you know he found the a curve fit which is uh, sufficiently good enough to describe it and this is what polhausen did it so polhausen's solution was expressed as d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 for the case where your prandtl number was extremely small okay so i say prandtl number approaching 0 okay so for such a case he found the curve fit like 0 0.564 times prandtl number raised to the power half this was the best fit which can describe the approximation for low extremely low prandtl numbers okay for moderate prandtl numbers between 0 0.6 and less than 15 he found 0 0.332 into pr power 1 by 3 okay and for prandtl number which is very large 0.339 pr power 1 by 3 in fact it's very close you know even this could have approximated all the way from prandtl number 0 0.6 to infinity it's only the third decimal point which is just changing but for prant very small prandtl numbers the functional dependence on prandtl number itself is different okay so in fact this is a very uh, useful information for us he has completely covered the entire prandtl number regimes okay so in fact it's a good exercise you can when we when you are solving this by for example shooting method you can you will you will be directly solving for d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0 right you have seen this just like the case of blasius solution where you don't know the curvature you guess it and try to match the other boundary condition okay f prime of infinity should be equal to 1 the same way here you guess d theta by d eta at eta eta equal to 0 you guess this and you finally match this solution okay so ultimately when you converge finally you will directly converge to the correct value of the slope at eta equal to 0 okay and if you probably check with the polhausen's correlation you can get a good idea how how good this correlation works okay so you can repeat this for different prandtl numbers right Okay, for different prandtl numbers you solve this equation you get the slope and then 
you substitute and check whether it satisfies the pole house and fit okay so that is a good way of for you to learn and understand whether this fit is uh, very accurate or not okay so this is what pole house and got will let us accept it for the time being uh, so most of the times we are interested in fluids in the kind of intermediate fractal numbers okay we are not going into liquid metals or or uh, fluids with the extremely high viscosity but with intermediate fractal numbers between 0.6 and 15 so we will take that value and then substitute for d theta by d eta for calculating the heat flux okay so therefore my heat flux will become now 0.332 into k times t wall minus t infinity and just flipping the signs here into prandtl number power 1 by 3 square root of u infinity by nu x so this is the equation for the wall flux i want to now go one step forward and calculate what is the heat transfer coefficient okay so my heat transfer coefficient as a function of x will be your wall flux divided by how do i define it wall temperature minus reference temperature is my free stream temperature okay so this will be 0.332 k cr power half square root of u infinity now i'll non dimensionalize uh, the heat transfer coefficient in terms of nusselt number local nusselt number which is defined this way okay so this will be 0.332 uh, pr power 1 by 3 so i multiply by x here so i will be getting square root of u infinity x by nu right so which is nothing but the reynolds number okay where your local reynolds number is u infinity x by the kinematic viscosity okay so this is the final expression uh, that you probably find in the textbooks uh, if you are taken a basic uh, heat transfer course you are uh, all you are straight away given the final expression for flat plate uh, nusselt number okay so this is how it is coming out so this is a very straight forward uh, correlation and probably most of you know by heart and uh, this is valid for the intermediate prandtl number range that we are talking about that is prandtl number greater than 0.6 and less than 15 okay so we can also do one more thing rather than int being interested in the local variation of heat transfer coefficient and nusselt number we can kind of uh, calculate an average uh, value of uh, h for the entire plate so therefore we can also define an average value h over bar which is 1 over l 0 to x h dx okay so this is the way i define my average over the entire plate length okay so if i substitute you can probably do that as a nice exercise you can substitute and integrate it with respect to x you will find that the resulting expression will be uh, 0.664 into k pr power 1 by 3 square root of u infinity by nu l okay which is exactly twice of h of x but here x will be equal to l okay so this is exactly twice of the heat transfer coefficient corresponding to x is equal to l okay now same way if you define an average nusselt number for the entire plate okay depending on the average heat transfer coefficient and based on the length instead of the local coordinate so you will be getting 0.664 into re based on the length and prandtl number 13 okay so this is this is uh, exactly twice that of nu at x is equal to l all right okay so these are some i think correlations which are familiar to you so i am not going to 
spend too much of time and uh, so in all these cases uh, you know that the Prandtl number is a very important parameter which is the ratio of nu by alpha so which gives you the ratio of momentum diffusivity by thermal diffusivity okay and you also know from the scaling analysis which we did when we derived the uh, boundary layer equations the relationship uh, between Prandtl number and uh, delta we, f we showed that my delta t by delta is approximately Prandtl number uh, to the power minus 1 by 2 for one case for uh, higher Prandtl numbers this relationship becomes Prandtl number to the power minus 1 by 3 but nevertheless uh, you can see that the thermal boundary layer thickness is inversely proportional to the Prandtl number okay so therefore if you are saying that my Prandtl number is much lesser than 1 so your thermal boundary layer thickness is much greater than your momentum boundary layer thickness and uh, for Prandtl number equal to 1 both are equal and vice versa okay so so this is the kind of uh, observation for higher Prandtl numbers for Prandtl numbers uh, greater than 1 of the order of 1 and greater than 1 you can clearly show that delta t by delta scales as Prandtl number to the power minus 1 by 3 okay so this uh, is something which was concluded once you calculate your uh, thermal boundary layer thickness from here and the momentum boundary layer thickness from the Blasher solution you can simply take the ratio and you find that it exactly scales by this Prandtl number power minus 1 by 3 this is something that which you can observe yourself okay for higher Prandtl number for the low Prandtl number regime it scales as Prandtl number power minus 1 by 2 so in fact uh, you can see here itself okay the slope for the low Prandtl number regime is of the order of PR power half here for higher Prandtl number it is PR power 1 by 3 okay so these are some some of the observations that you can make and most of the times uh, if you are looking at oils which are very viscous you are looking at high Prandtl numbers or if you are looking at liquid metals you are looking at very very small Prandtl numbers most of the practical fluids air water and so on they fall in this intermediate Prandtl number regimes so that is why we have specially derived the expression for Nusselt number for those uh, uh, majority of the fluids which fall within that Prandtl number range okay so in fact this will be also a very nice exercise uh, which I can give you probably in your homework uh, you can calculate the thermal boundary layer thickness once you get your Blasius profile right so that is that is the value of y where your eta corresponding to the eta where your uh, u by u infinity goes to 1 or 0 0.99 or f prime that you calculate should be approaching 0 0.99 the corresponding value of y will be delta the same way thermal boundary layer thickness is defined as the point where your theta goes to 0 0.99 okay the corresponding value of y so you can calculate both you can take the ratio of that and you can see how it scales you check you check the scaling with respect to Prandtl number okay so you can keep doing this for different Prandtl numbers and you will find that it exactly scales in that manner all right so uh, so with this we will move on to the next topic uh, but but actually what could have been done I could have actually started off uh, from the other the, the next topic uh, that I am going to talk about now rather than doing the flat plate solution because the flat plate solution is a special case of that particular uh, type of flows okay so this uh, these type of flows are called as Faulkner scan flows okay so let me just uh, give you an introduction to the Faulkner can scan type of flows before we go into the similarity solution so any questions so far uh, on the flat plate uh, flat plate is uh, a very basic case that is why I had to start so that you can understand how the similarity solution is obtained how we can solve the ordinary differential equations and so on the other cases are little bit more uh, not that difficult but it is just uh, one order of uh, approximation higher and uh, the flat plate case is going to be a special case of those kind of flows I did not want to directly 
start off from there and show you the flat plate. I could have done that to save the time, but uh, nevertheless, it would have not been a very good learning experience for you. Okay. Uh, okay. One more thing, which I probably will just mention casually before uh, signing off from this. Uh, I think all of you have heard about Reynolds analogy. Okay. Uh, I think Reynolds analogy is something which is uh, taught in any heat transfer course. So you can also show. I mean, for the case of uh, Prandtl number equal to one. Okay, there is a very good relationship between the Nusselt number and the uh, skin friction coefficient. Okay, so it is expressed in terms of uh, Stanton number is equal to exactly CF by two. Okay, so this was called the Reynolds analogy because it was discovered by uh, Osborne Reynolds and uh, this relationship is very useful because once you know the skin friction coefficient, you can directly calculate the corresponding Nusselt number also. Okay, your Stanton number is another non-dimensional number which which is a non-dimensional group, which is defined based on your Nusselt number, Reynolds number, and Prandtl number. So all these are grouped and just another no name is given to that. Now for Prandtl number not equal to one. People have found that still you can use an analogy. Now that that is called as the Reynolds Colburn analogy because it's an extension of the Reynolds analogy for Prandtl number one. According to that, your Stanton number into P R power two by three is exactly equal to C F by two. So wherever your Prandtl number is not equal to one, you can still use the Reynolds Colburn analogy to calculate the Nusselt number from the skin friction coefficient. So in any way, I mean already when Paul Hausen uh, did it, he understood the relationship between the Nusselt number and skin friction directly for Prandtl number 1. Okay, For the other Prandtl numbers, it was extended based on the uh, Reynolds Colburn analogy. And therefore, these are very useful expressions for, for, for flat plate is concerned. You do not have to really be bothered about the heat transfer solution. Once you get the fluid flow solution, you can apply the analogy and calculate the uh, heat transfer solution, especially if we are interested in the uh, heat transfer rate at the wall. Okay, okay, so therefore, we are more interested in the Nusselt number and things like that. Okay, so with that, I think you can show and derive this yourself. It's not that difficult. I think you can do it. I am not going to spend time. And therefore, with this, uh, we will move on to the Falkner 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 scan type of flows. Okay, so so these are flows with pressure gradient. Okay, so 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 far, as you all know, in the flat plate case, we have uh, seen that the pressure gradient is neglected, and therefore, it becomes very simple to solve. Now, what happens when you have flows with pressure gradient? Okay, can we derive a closed form uh, analytical solution, or maybe can we find at least a similarity solution which we can solve numerically? Okay, so this uh, was not addressed till the 1930s. Uh, so when Falkner and Scan, they extended, they studied the similarity solutions derived for flat plate, and they tried to extend that for flows with pressure gradient term also. Okay. So and that that's why they they have been called as Falkner scan solutions. At least the flow part. Okay, so heat transfer part was uh, added to the flow part because the heat transfer equation has nothing to do with the pressure gradient. The heat, trans, heat, heat transfer already has been solved. Okay, so once you solve the flow, that F that comes out of the flow goes into the similarity solution for uh, temperature okay so that is going to be much simpler so the flow is the major complication here in fact falkner and scan they discovered that for flows with adverse pressure gradient uh, they have uh, in fact you can do this from the potential flow theory that is from the inviscid solution that you can derive the velocity profile, the free stream velocity, which is a function of x now, it is not, it is not a constant anymore, so can be shown to be relationship with respect to x as cx power m. 
okay where c is a constant and m is also a constant but it is related to what is called the wedge angle okay so beta by 2 minus beta and beta pi is your wedge angle okay now what does it mean by the wedge angle is if you draw a very a general kind of a problem with uh, describing this kind of a free stream velocity profile okay it will be something like this okay so you have a wedge okay this is a wedge profile okay so you stick this wedge into the free stream and uh, so initially here your free stream which is approaching will be constant and now once it encounters this wedge so there is of course a pressure gradient okay so the flow will try to for for example here accelerate okay so therefore here the local free stream velocity will be a function of x okay correct okay and this profile is described by this relation cx power m for this kind of a case what is the wedge angle so this is your wedge angle beta pi okay so this is the so this is a general figure configuration for which uh, Faulkner and Scan has shown the similarity solution and uh, you can derive special cases of this particular solution okay now you can see if my beta equal to 0 what happens what happens to the wedge it becomes a flat plate okay so these two collapse and this is just simply flow past a flat plate and if my beta equal to 0 what what is the value of m m is also 0 right so therefore my u infinity will be constant so which becomes basically the flat plate solution so flat plate solution is a special case of the wedge solutions or the falconer scan solutions okay now if my beta equal to 1 for example how does this flow look okay so let me draw the different cases beta equal to 0 as you can see that this will be a flat plate okay now if my beta equal to 1 what will happen to m 1 okay so therefore my u infinity of x will be cx okay now how does how does the configuration look if my if my beta equal to 1 the wedge angle will be what pi so it will be a vertical plate instead of a horizontal plate but the flow will be still coming along the horizontal direction so this will come and impinge the flow comes like this it impinges and it goes this way okay so this is called a stagnation point solution because you can see that the flow comes hits the velocity has to be zero so this is a stagnation point okay so this is a stagnation solution stagnation point okay so this is i mean since it is 2d this is 2d stagnation flow or stagnation point flow okay so these are some special cases of the falconer scan now what happens if my beta is negative so so far i have been discussing the case where beta is zero and beta is greater than zero so beta going up to 1 now what 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 can ha can can also you can also visualize another configuration where beta is negative okay so how could how could beta be negative so you can for example take this you can wrap it around inside it becomes zero when it touches here and again you turn it inside so that becomes negative and when you do that if you do completely wrap around this way you will find this flow cannot 
flow past this surface okay but instead this flow will have to come and then deviate this way okay so therefore i am just uh, tilting it upside down if you if you tilt it upside down you can say for beta less than 0 for example where your m also will be negative correct if my beta is less than 0 m also will be negative so i can have a flow which is something like this okay this is my wedge this is how my wedge becomes okay so i take this this will be 0 and again i put it this way and make this horizontal okay so this will be horizontal and like this the flow will pass like this okay the same thing i am drawing upside down okay so the flow will be like this so what kind of a pressure gradient here it is is it favorable pressure gradient or adverse pressure gradient hmm? this is an adverse pressure gradient okay because you are because why your m is less than 0 so your velocity has to decelerate correct so this is an adverse pressure gradient flow all right so whereas the uh, the case where your beta is greater than 0 what should happen the flow should accelerate your m is positive okay so wherever your wedge angles are positive like this it is an accelerating flow where your wedge angle is negative like this it is a decelerating flow or it is an adverse pressure gradient flow in this case it is a favorable pressure gradient flow okay so therefore you can see there is a family of solutions that can be derived once you have the basic uh, solution for the free stream this is coming from the inviscid this is coming from the potential flow or the inviscid solution okay so for this kind of class of problems there are different configurations that are possible depending on the values of m which depends on the wedge angle okay beta pi and the limiting cases some of the limiting cases that we can have a look at is the case of beta equal to 0 which gives you the flat plate solution beta equal to 1 which gives the stagnation point solution and negative values of beta which is an adverse pressure gradient solution now if i reduce the value of beta so small in fact if i make it too negative what will happen is beyond a certain uh, point the flow will separate the adverse pressure gradient will be so strong that flow separation will take place and once the flow separation takes place the boundary layer theory is not valid anymore okay the boundary layer theory is valid only within the boundary layer once the flow separates there is no boundary layer there okay therefore you have to be cautious there is the lowest low, there, there is a lower limit for beta till which you can find solutions okay below that flow separation takes place and you cannot find a similarity solution to those problems okay so now what we are going to do is for this kind of uh, class of problems we will write down the uh, try to reduce the partial differential equation to a similarity equation so can you all try to write down the uh, governing equations for this kind of problems okay so for flows with pressure gradient so how does the boundary layer equations look okay the continuity is still the same how about the momentum equation everything is the same except only one term which is the pressure gradient term and we are now neglecting the uh, okay now when we are not still written the energy equation first we will take the flow solution and then we will apply that to the energy okay so this is your governing equation now we all know how do we calculate the pressure pressure gradient okay i probably mentioned this uh, in the very third or fourth class okay when we derived the governing equations for boundary layer 
So how do we evaluate the pressure gradient inside the boundary layer? Upstream. So since uh, we have shown that the pressure is invariant of uh, y, okay, so we can evaluate this outside the boundary layer, and the same value should be valid inside also. Okay. So therefore, if you apply the governing equations outside the boundary layer, so you will get u infinity du infinity by dx. Okay. Only your free stream velocity is there. Your v velocity is zero. So that should be equal to minus one by rho dp by dx, and there are no viscous effects also there. Okay, so you can simply replace your pressure gradient with your equivalent velocity gradients. Therefore, this term will become u infinity by dx. All right. So now, for the class of problems we are looking at. The wedge wedge flow problems. Okay, this is the form of the velocity profile. C x power m. Okay, so therefore we know the functional dependence of u infinity on x. We can just simply substitute it. Can you tell me how does it look? Since my u infinity is equal to C x power m, my du infinity by dx will be C m x power m minus one. Okay. So therefore, this becomes u du dx plus v du dy is equal to. I can uh, write again u infinity. I can, I can say that this c x power m is again nothing but u infinity. Okay. So I have one u infinity here, u infinity here, which I club together as u infinity square, and apart from that, I have m, and I have x power minus 1 okay so i can write this as m by x plus new okay so this is the form of the momentum equation that i will be working with for the falkner scan flows okay now what are the boundary conditions at y equal to 0 u and v will be 0 no slip boundary condition and y going to infinity my u approaches my free stream velocity now be careful your free stream velocity is function of x it is not a constant anymore okay so which is actually of the form cx power m okay so now uh, how do we reduce this to an ode the same approach that uh, we did with the Blasius flow. You assume a similarity variable. Let us assume the same similarity variable that we got for the flat plate flows, okay? Because functional dependence of uh, boundary layer thickness on x is going to be the same whether you have a pressure gradient term or not. Therefore, your eta, which is a function of y by delta, the functional dependence of delta is still the same. Therefore, you can assume the same similarity variable. holds good okay only thing here u infinity is a function of x okay so therefore you can write this as y square root of c by nu into this is x power m this is minus 1 x power m minus 1 half okay m minus 1 by 2 and also we can define the stream function and show that stream function is related it is a function of eta the same way that it was there for the flat plate also. So those things remain unchanged where your stream function is defined such that u is equal to d psi by dy v is equal to minus okay so till now this is nothing new okay this is the same thing we did for the Blasius solution. So all you need to do is substitute for the derivatives now okay in terms of the stream function now stream function is a function of f so therefore you can calculate u v and you can substitute all of them here now only thing is you have this m and u infinity is a function of x okay so once you substitute into this you will find that that i'll leave as a nice exercise to you 
it will reduce to a ODE in terms of f and eta without any terms from y and x appearing okay. So therefore this confirms that a similarity solution to this class of problems is possible. Okay. It is not too difficult to show once you plug in all the uh, velocity gradients and your velocities into this expression let me call this as number 2 your stream function already satisfies the continuity okay. So you have to just plug it in here and substituting into 2 you get your final uh, ODE which is free of x and y terms it is free, only function of f and eta okay. So therefore this shows that for this kind of flows similarity solution is perfectly possible okay and this is the Falkner scan similarity solution. So now you can see now here it is also a function of m okay now if you put m equal to 0 okay what happens this term completely vanishes you have 1 by 2 f d square f by d eta square equal to 0 so this is nothing but the Blasius solution okay. So in fact without even touching the Blasius solution we can straight away started we could have started from Falkner scan and showed Blasius solution as a limiting case okay. So all kinds of uh, problems can be approached in this manner you can put any value of m that you are interested in for that particular configuration and get the similarity profiles for that particular configuration. So this is a function of m right here. So what are the boundary conditions? The same boundary conditions that, that, have, that we have used for Blasius solution apply here eta equal to 0 you are f equal to 0 why you are f equal to 0 which boundary condition does it satisfy. No slip, correct. But uh, exactly, which whether whether does it correspond to u equal to zero or v equal to zero? Huh? U equal to zero. What is u in terms of uh, f? What is the relation between u and f? U by u infinity. Therefore f equal to 0 does it correspond to this so then u equal to 0 should be what f prime should be 0 so then what what does it correspond to v equal to 0 so go back to your the way that we derived the Blasius solution look at the expressions for u and v okay so if you put f equal to 0 then you then only your v becomes 0 because already from the condition that uh, u equal to 0 we know that f prime equal to 0 so for v has v to be 0 then this has to be 0 okay and what is the remaining boundary condition eta going to infinity the same same thing that we have done for the flat plate okay so what is the condition at eta going to infinity u by u infinity should be 1 or df by d eta or f prime should be equal to 1 okay so so this this is this is called the falkner scan similarity solution so now how do we solve it shooting method okay exactly the same same technique that you did for Blasius solution okay you have a boundary condition for f you have a boundary condition for f prime but you do not have a boundary condition for f double prime at eta equal to 0 so you have to guess something and finally match this satisfy this condition 
okay you don't worry about because even if you have this equation I'll just write down if you apply the shooting method it will simply reduce to three ODEs which I'll just write and stop there or maybe I can write it here so the first ODE will be what f prime equal to g right second ODE will be g prime equal to h and what is the third ODE you substitute in terms of f g and h here okay so that will be h h prime will be equal to minus you have m plus 1 by 2 into f into g g prime or h d square f by d eta square h okay this has to be f into h plus m into 1 minus df by d eta the whole this is uh, yeah so this has to be f prime square so this has to be g square okay so this is my third ODE so these are the three first order ODEs okay all I have to do is march from eta equal to 0 till eta some value of 8 or 10 okay and the same about set of boundary conditions you know you guess by Newton's method successively you reach to the better guess and then check the condition that at eta equal to uh, large value some eta equal to 8 or 10 your f prime which is nothing but your g should should be equal to 1 okay so that equation has to satisfy till then you keep on iterating by Newton's method you keep guessing better values and you have to solve the set of ODEs for all the points in the domain okay the same exactly the same technique all you need to know is the value of m so which value of which configuration that you are looking okay so once you know the configuration the solution procedure is identical for different for each configuration you get a class of uh, solutions so we will stop here so tomorrow we will complete the uh, heat transfer part of the Falkner scan solution also.